Yekinda on his way out of Virtus Pro. Now, boys, girls, and otherwise, this is obviously some pretty big news in the Counter-Strike world. Yekindar, who was the eighth best player of last year, according to the HLTV Top 20, is supposedly on his way out of Virtus Pro, according to a report by Deserto. Now, I've heard in various forms this rumor kind of knocking around for a little bit now. Um... He's also the guy, just if you look in from the outside, he seemed pretty uncomfortable with the current situation. And he seems like a very, very ambitious young man. I think with the effort he's put in to appear on stuff outside of just playing, he's obviously tried to appear on the broadcast and such. He's done some stuff, um, obviously, with HLTV. He's appeared on the podcast. Um, and he seems very charismatic and like he's got a really bright future and a bright career ahead of him. Also, the fact he speaks Latvian and Russian, uh, Latvian and Russian, English and Russian, is a huge boon. Basically, he can play for any team in the top 20 right now um uh, just to go into it a little bit further just to summarize a couple of the key points that we've said here um the vp general manager basically said that yekinder's under quite a lot of pressure obviously he comes from latvia um so he and his homeland are going to have a different opinion on the russian invasion of ukraine than potentially russian natives potentially let's say uh you know eastern ukraine natives i'm not gonna delve too much into the political complexities of depending on where you are what your opinion on the russian war is um obviously russia's invasion of ukraine is an outrage that goes without saying but the point here is is that he is from latvia potentially people who are from russia and who consume russian media will have a different opinion whereas he is from europe so it Basically, the reason Yekinda maybe is under more pressure than other people is simply because of where he is from, the sensibilities of the people, where he is from, etc, etc. Obviously, he's always said about being unsure about his future with the team, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, a very good player. But what I wanted to have a little talk about here was have a little bit of a thought experiment about the different teams that he might join. So here we have the current world ranking, and I was just basically going to go through it piece by piece and talk about the potential teams that he might join. He could join any team in the world let's put it out there right now yekindar is the best aggressive slash entry frag type player that you could get on the market right now there is literally nobody better and there is nobody who plays quite the way yekindar does his style is so outrageously aggressive he finds openings he puts big numbers up he is a pretty unique player maybe art is somebody that you could compare him to but even then i think the way art plays is um art has his own play style whereas i think yekinda takes a more traditional entry fragging play style to the extreme but yeah, if we kick off obviously with FaZe, I think it's obvious the guy that he would be replacing is Rain. Now, I'm going to discuss potential moves in two ways. One, how likely do I think it is? And then two, in the theoretical world where it happens, how good do I think it is? I don't think this move is very likely. Um, and not just because they are the best team in the world right now, winning tournaments, have a very good chance of winning the major. So there's obviously an element of why, even though this move would likely happen after the major, why would you mess with a winning formula? Um, I also think because of who Yekindar would be replacing, Rain, uh, Carrigan, in a recent interview I did with him, described Rain as his loyal soldier. I think Rain is very important to that team from a personality standpoint, being more experienced, being a guy who is basically totally supportive of Carrigan and his leadership style, and I think helps be a little bit of an enforcer in that squad in helping make sure that everyone listens to Carrigan, that Carrigan is heard and that he gets his uh, his viewpoint across. So I don't think it's very likely, A, phase is the best team in the world, B, you know, you're starting to cram in a lot of star power, whereas Rain is somebody who's, I think, a little bit more willing to sacrifice himself for the team. But also, I just think because of the role Rain plays in the team, Carrigan really likes Rain from what I can tell. I doubt it would happen. Would it be good if it did happen? I think... I I kind of alluded to it a little bit just then by saying you're cramming a lot of stars into this team, right? And 
all of these players need a degree of room already on the team obviously outside of carrigan and outside to a degree of rain but even then rain gets some decent positions on certain maps like rain is playing a on overpass so he does still get some decent positions but rops and brokey rops in particular you need to let off the neat leash you need to let rops do what he does brokey is being let off the leash a lot as well at the moment and being allowed to go and play make as an orpa twists i think is a guy who's a little bit more willing to play within a system but even then he is a guy i think who tends to want to be alive late round and such basically what i'm saying is i think it would be no easy feet to cram as many players who maybe could be a star and might need room and might need facilitating into the team i think it would not be as easy as people maybe think on the flip side carrigan is maybe the best in the world at doing that cramming star players into a team and system and i think what would be important is that it doesn't seem like there's huge egos Within the team right now, Carrigan has said as much that there aren't huge egos, but also Yekinda doesn't seem to have a huge ego. So actually, I think it would bang. I think it really would bang pretty fucking hard, Yekinda to phase. Um, the thing that makes me say, ultimately, I this is not the one I would want to see happen. And ultimately, I, I'm going to err on the side of saying... I don't think it's necessarily the best move to make. It's just because Rain has been playing really well this year so far as well. Yeah, I wouldn't make this move if I was phased, probably. Um, but who knows? Like, you know, if you're ambitious, Yekinder is so damn good. Can you actually say no to him? Next up is obviously Na'Vi. Now, Na'Vi, if you had to push me, Na'Vi are the team I expect him to go to. There is a little bit of talk about uh, maybe some problems with Electronic. Um, I don't know if Electronic wants to move out of Russia, whereas I think the rest of the team are going to have to relocate if they want to continue playing top tier Counter-Strike. Basically, all CIS players, Russians, Ukrainians, whatever, are in a similar position where if they want to continue competing, competing at the top level, then they're probably going to have to relocate. I've heard some things about Electronic and people close to him and their opinions on the war. Um, I haven't done enough research in that to kind of say definitively, but there seems to be some potential problems. And if nothing else, it looks like Electronic maybe wants to not relocate. So it seems pretty likely that Na'Vi will lose Electronic after the major and electronic for yekinder is an absolutely baller swap is it likely to happen i think this is the most likely move yes because i think electronic is probably going and it just makes sense there's a spot on that roster it's a cis team they speak russian yekinder speaks russian it all makes a hell of a lot of sense also role wise electronic is on the t side in particular one of the more aggressive elements of navi a lot of the time uh i've just got to think towards his plays on b overpass just walking through monster like he's the aggressive lurk type player on that map a lot of the time and he does aggressive roles on other t sides as well so basically from a likelihood and from a would it be good perspective i think yekinda to navi would be an absolute banger I'm not sure it would improve, well, on the current form of Na'Vi, it, it could improve them a lot, but if we take the prime of this lineup, which wasn't that long ago, would swapping Electronic for Yekandar make that much of a difference? I don't think so, if I'm perfectly honest. I think Electronic is one of the best riflers in the world. Yekandar is one of the best riflers in the world. It would be a pretty even swap, I think, in just in terms of raw ability, firepower, star power. But I think in the condition Na'Vi are in now, the fact that they're probably going to lose Electronic, it's like a dream swap. You can't have possibly hoped to have somebody like Yekindar available to plug into this team. So I think it's the most likely move to happen, and I think it would bang if it did happen. Next up, we'll look at Cloud9, obviously ex-Gambit players, whatever. Um, I can only assume if this swap were to happen, it would be for Inters and... It's hard to say exactly what, how this would go, but Yekinder alongside Nafani being like a really aggressive entry duo with Shiro behind them, Axile doing his like weak side, you know, other side of the map lurk plays. Like, yeah, I think it could be a somewhat likely move. I think Gambit slash Cloud9 or whatever have stagnated a little bit. They've got Cloud9 behind them now, who I think would be willing to, to pump a little bit of money in to get that upgrade going. I don't think it's outside of the realms of possibility. It's more likely than the phase move. Let's put it that way. And I think it would slap. 
I really do. Uh, I don't... I'm not somebody who's here, like, calling for Inter's head. I think Gambit had a structure, and Inter's played a role within that. He plays a lot of bitch roles. He basically facilitates and allows Axile and Shiro to be the star players. You know, Nafani's the aggressive guy. Hobbit is basically a middleman, but has a lot more freedom. Inters is basically the guy who gets stuffed with all the bitch roles on Gambit. On Cloud9, sorry. So I'm not one who's like automatically minus Inters because his stats are bad. Like, I can see deeper than that. The problem is, is I do think the team has stagnated, struggled to push on, and I think a change is probably needed at some point, whether that's in the way they approach the game, like they fundamentally need to go back to the drawing board and, and change the way they play, or the more easy, I would suggest, is a roster move. And like, if you can upgrade Inters for Yekindar, I think you have to take that punt if you're Cloud9. That just is mouth-watering that prospect and i can only imagine that would absolutely slap so is it likely probably not as likely as navi in my opinion but more likely than phase and would it bang yeah i mean most of these it would bang but i think this would bang hard this would be the biggest upgrade let's put it that way in my opinion out of phase navi this would be the biggest one next up is heroic he's not going there so we'll move on next up is ents this is not hugely likely i would say but it is an international team so he could go there and speak english but with ents on the rise they're on at the moment i don't see that they would swap anyone sphinx is fucking banging madden is banging hades is obviously all but the only person i think you could swap is disha would do i see ents doing it no do i think it would bang if they did yeah i think yekinda on this team would automatically make this team potentially the best in the world definitely competing with phase so i won't harp on too much about this one but yeah i think it would be a good move next up is g2 and i think this one is very likely um i think this one is up there with navi as being the most likely i think carlos the owner and ceo whatever of g2 would definitely be interested in at least pursuing this move i'd be shocked if he didn't at least throw his hat in the ring try and talk to yekinder and yekinder for Jax. i understand that Jax plays i think an important role in the in the team in terms of as a personality and as a bit of a leadership figure he i think he seems like he's helping monacy settle in and, and he helps I think level out uh, the slightly potentially tilty influence of Nico. I think Jax helps level that out. On the flip side, Yekinda seems like a positive guy. Seems like he'd be a good person to have within the team. I think it's very likely G2 at least chase this potential transfer, whether it, they get it or not. I don't think it's as likely as potentially a Na'Vi or... Or even, to be honest, a Cloud9 move. I think Yekinda would probably more likely go to both of those two teams. Um, but I think it would absolutely slam. Yekindar for Jax is just a fucking humongous upgrade. If you just use Yekindar in exactly the same way you're using Jax, it's just better. G2 are already a very dangerous team, and Yekindar could push them over the edge. I think this would be the best team in the world if Yekindar joined, and it worked. Whether it would work, you know, obviously remains to be seen, but... Like, you can't tell me that it's not exciting to have Yekindar and Nico on the same fucking team. Fuck! Um, I don't think there is anybody else that it is too likely that um, Yekinda would go to, obviously because basically he'd be going to a worse team if he didn't go to either G2, you know, Na'Vi or Cloud9. Maybe FaZe, maybe Ents. I, I highly doubt the Ents one, by the way, but, you know, it, it just a fun thought experiment. Outside of that, he's not going to Astralis, he's not going Vitality, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if an NA org like Liquid at least put their names on the table and said, hey, look, like, we would sign you. Um, that would be the left field move I wouldn't, like, rule out is an NA move because it, it's got to be potentially appealing in terms of lifestyle and stuff um he could probably get paid an absolute shit ton like fucking big boy money like set him for life money but i don't think it will happen it's just an interesting possibility the outside shout is something like entropic i'm not sure who entropic would swap out but the problem is entropic are in like at least they're a czech organization so i guess they have uh, a lot of potential to like relocate the team and stuff um but just an interesting thought experiment again yekinda to entropic would be like super interesting 
and yeah outside of that there's probably nothing that worth talking about yeah to og um the problem is is you've already got flames who i think is a super big boy entry man and um og have their own problems at the moment so i wouldn't go there if i was yakindar and then yeah i guess mouse is the other international roster uh Euro like european lineup uh yakindar to forza that would be cool that would actually be quite cool um it wouldn't happen obviously uh, and I think Forza are actually looking really good at the moment with their current team. But yeah, that that I, that just in my brain sounds like a cool little thought experiment. Like, how good could Forza be with Yekinder on the lineup? That is all from me, everybody. You know the drill. Comment, like it. Uh, let all your family members know that there's this sick YouTuber you watch, King Demps. He's beautiful. He's so charismatic. He's got beautiful smile. Uh, and if you didn't like it, you're probably Virtus Pro, in which case, uh, you know, fuck you guys. You've been kind of shit about this whole Russian invasion thing, so <laughs> lol, losing your best player. Ah!